easy and it is took a while to figure out the system. Yeah, how long did it take you to finish a home? I don't like, know. Well once we figured it out probably like thirty minutes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not too bad. The first time I figured like one problem is it it took me like two hours. Roughly yeah, two hours. Yeah, that's what that's been the first time. Yeah. No one else? Like how's the homework? Too hard? Easy. Easy? Yeah? Nice. Awesome. So we have one more minute. If you guys want to like uh, sit in groups, that will be easier because later on on the worksheet, if you work like alone, it might take a lot of time. So if you guys want to like uh, um, move your seat to like where you can like work with um, someone else, that'd be great. So let me review really quick about the last time. Last time we talked about the application of geometry. We learned like three topics. The first one we talked about is the, how to find the arc length. So for example, if we have like a circle in here with a center, this marker doesn't work well. Okay, and then we have a radius here. Um, say I want to make an angle, so I need another ray. Let's, let's make a random ray like that, and then that will generate like an angle called theta in here. So that arc length in here, that would be represented by like this um, Y in here, like the bending curve in here. We call it S for arc length. Um, does anyone remember the formula to find the arc length? Yeah. Uh, S equal to R times theta, thank you. And also the second concept that we learn is how to convert from um, degrees to gradient and vice versa. Uh, degrees to gradient and vice versa. Okay, so for example, if I were to give you something like 28 degrees, what should I multiply by so that I can convert 28 degrees to radian? over 180 good thank you um but okay I'm okay with this one but then the notation seems a little bit awkward in here because we have the degrees in here but none of these have the like the unit with it so which one should I put degrees on and which one should I put like radian on anyone should I go like pi degree in here or like pi radian here pi radians okay nice for shortcut, let me just call it rad in here, and the, the, so automatically the other one will be degrees. And uh, like a quick trick to figure out whether this one is right or wrong is when you look opposite to it, and you see that this degree can cancel with this degree. So at the end, whatever the number it came out to be, um, this one will be in, ra in radian, right? And then vice versa, if I give you something, say like 28, but notice this time it doesn't have the, the degree on, right? So we will multiply with 180 degrees divided by pi radian. And again, this one is meant to be radian, but it's invisible, so you can just cross it out. Like, just imagine that there's a radian in here and you cross it out. And then whatever number came out to be in here, the unit of it will be in degrees, right? Like, any questions so far about that? Yeah, looking good, all right, cool. And then the third concept that we also cover um, the other day is how to find the area of a sector. Area of a sector. Okay, so let's stick with this picture. We start up with a circle having a center in here, also the radius in here. We generate the angle by drawing a random ray in here. After that, say if I want to um, calculate the area of this shaded um, sector called A, what should be the area? Um, what should be the formula for it? Anyone recalls? Uh, nice, thank you. And what else? Like, what if I want to uh, calculate, what if I want to compute A using the arc length? Is there any way that I can do it too? 
it's definitely will have one half, but the, the calculation will be a little bit calculated different. It's in the box, like in the worksheet. Anyone? Just want to like uh, double check on 7.1 real quick, just to see what it is. And just a heads up, um, this one will be on the quiz. Yeah, like the Wednesday quiz. Anyone can find it? Arts and Vest, thank you. Where do you find it? Like, where is it? Like, what page? You know? Page five? Nice. So, yeah, if you cannot find it, uh, uh, please look, take a look in page five on the first handout that we had, 7.1. So, this one is a big, like, key point. Okay. So, okay, moving on for today, we will talk about the derivation of trig function of uh, trigonometry. Um, there's actually two ways to talk about the derivation of trigonometry. There's one way using right triangles, and the other way we can use the unit circle to derive it. Today we're going to talk about the first way, using the right triangles to, de to derive trigonometry. So I have like four topics for today. Hopefully we can get through all of them. As for review, let me pull up. No, that would be too high. So the first thing that I want to recall in here is a triangle in which one angle is right angle is called what? Like, do you guys have any name for it? Uh, thank you. The first one, it should be right triangle. This one, I hope, is straightforward. Right triangle. OK. The second uh, idea that I want to recall is in a right triangle, um, what kind of theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared? And um, to demonstrate for it, let me draw a right triangle in here. Let this one be a right angle. And then, um, OK, do you guys remember like, the name for the three sides of a right triangle? Anyone? Like, the, what do we call by the highest side of, the, of like, any side in here? How, let me give you some options. We have two legs in here. Um, let's just put leg and leg. And the longest one would be hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So we have this side here, this side, and this side. Which one names which? Anyone, anyone wants to take a guess? Uh, how about you? Is that hypotenuse? Thank you. So this one, um, it's got a type. Okay, and the other two, because this one is already out, and there's only like one hypotenuse in a right triangle. So automatically, this one will be leg, and the other one will be leg two. If you want to be more specific, you can call this one the shorter leg, and this one the longer leg. The longest leg is always the hypotenuse, so that's why we don't call it the, the longest leg. We just go by hypotenuse, okay? And which one in here would be A and B and C? How about C? Which one should be C? Hypotenuse. Thank you. So this one, we're going to call it C. The other one, we have two options, either this one being A, this one being B, or the other way around. It really doesn't matter because they have the same, same name as leg. So you can call them like A and B. It doesn't matter the order. Yeah. So do you guys recall this relationship? Ish? Pythagorean theorem, thank you. So the second thing, the Pythagorean is a long name. Yeah. Okay, for shortcut, uh, we're going to call it PT. Okay. So, where A, B are the legs and C are the hypotenuse, along as I'm on the tree, the three sides in the triangle. Okay, lastly, um, in a triangle, we always going to have three angles, right? This one is right triangle already, so let's put it aside. We make it special because we only talk about the right triangle specifically on this section. The outer two angles, the good thing about the outer, the outer two angles are, is that they both are less than 90 degrees. Okay, so do you guys remember what it's called for an angle that is less than 90 degrees? Acute. Thank you. So that will be the third definition in here. Uh, an angle theta is acute. Yeah, acute. If a 
excuse me, all that. Okay, so any anyone have any questions so far? Yeah. So let me move on. Really quick in here. If I'm going too fast or if you cannot like uh, have enough time to catch up, let me know, okay? I'll pause. Okay. Um I put this diagram on to demonstrate the, the right triangle that we just talked about. This one is for like the, the definition of acute angle to demonstrate it. I'm trying to tell you guys that acute angle is something that's like really small. Like you cannot have something as big as this one. For example, say this one is like the X, Y coordinate. Um, this one in here is not an acute angle at all because as you can tell, it's bigger than 90 degrees. Okay, this one. We have a name for it, but I don't think it matters right now. So for a Q angle, we will need something small. We need something looking like this. It could be like this, but it cannot like move past this axis. Okay. Okay, so um, how can we relay the right triangles back to the angle? Say we pick this angle to be theta in here. What if I don't want to stick with the purple triangle? What if I want to zoom it in or zoom it out? What if I want to make that triangle bigger or smaller? I wonder whether this angle in here will be controlled by any ratio of any, like, of the two, of any combination of the two sides in here. So with that motivation, I came up with these three, I mean, th these six ratio. We have a lot of options. We have like three sides in here. So I play around with them. I have like A over C, B over C, B over A, same thing. As long as you don't repeat it. You don't want to do like A over A, B over B, or C over C because if they're the same, then technically you only have one, right? Like that's not really interesting. That's why I want you, uh, we want to like mix and match them and make sure none of them, like the top and bottom, would be the same. So let me rewrite, redraw this triangle a little bit bigger. So at the bigger triangle, the red one in here, the whole side here will be C. This one is B and this one is A. And say if I want to zoom it out, I'm gonna have like a small little one in here. Okay, I'm gonna call this one B prime, C prime, A prime. Okay, can you guys help me um, find the ratio that matching up with B over C? And remember, you have like a lot of options in here. You can have like C prime over B prime, A prime over um, B prime, C prime over A prime, any mix and match. So which one will match up with B over C? B prime over C prime. Anyone like agree with that, disagree with that? Yeah, okay, so that looks right. Okay, how about A over C? Uh, can you speak louder? Anyone? Okay, thank you, A prime over C prime. So on, we're gonna have uh, pretty much the same thing over here, B prime over A prime, C prime over B prime, C prime over A prime, and this one lastly, A prime over B prime. So what does it mean? It tells you that no matter what cat like triangle, no matter if you want to zoom it in or out, this ratio will stay the same. And by the way, this one is theta. That's why we have, we have like come up with the name for this ratio. Um, we're gonna name each of them, psi, cosine, tension, cosecant, secant, and cotension. And how do we know which one is which? I'm gonna show you guys the next slide. This one. Okay, so the six ratios of the right triangle, the six ratio that we had earlier, B over C, A over C, and so on, we call all of them the trig trigonometry functions of acute angles. And just like a quick redeeming here, it's like these, um, these trig functions are only meant for 
acute angles, right? It's like, so if you want to have like obtuse angle or like right angles, it's not going to work. It has to be an angle that is acute. How we define it, we're going to go by saying psi. Shortcut for it would be this one. This one is a name for it, and this one is how we write in math. Okay, so we're gonna call psi of theta, and make sure psi here is only the name if you wanted to write like S I N. But if you were to write it in like math symbol, make sure you can attach it with an angle, or else it doesn't make sense. So if I see you guys write this on the test, I'm I'm just gonna cross it out because it doesn't mean anything. Okay, it just means a name, but it's not like like a function in math. Okay, so make sure for each of the trick function in here, you have to attach the theta in here or the angle in here. So we define psi to be opposite of our hypotenuse. For example, if I have something like this, we always gonna start with a right triangle, define the right angle, and after that we define theta. Um, we always gonna have the hypotenuse. Like you said before, hypotenuse is always the, the, the side that looks opposite to the right triangle. And opposite and adjacent are really cap like objective to the angle in here. For example, if my theta is in here, looking across it, this side would be the opposite. And the one that's right next to um, theta, this one would be adjacent. Okay. In another scenario, if I don't want my theta to be in here, if I pick my theta to be like the top corner angle, hypotenuse, it will still be the same because it's always the highest side in the right angle. But the opposite angle, the opposite side to this angle now would be the bottom one. And the adjacent side to this angle now would be this one. So watch out for it. Opposite and adjacent are not always stay the same. It depends on what angle you're picking. Okay. And next up, for more definition, we also have cosine being defined by adjacent or hypotenuse. And, um, Okay, so technically I would expect you guys to remember the first three concepts. These three, you guys can come up with like um, tricks to remember it. Um, we can talk about the relationship of uh, all six of them later, but there's also a trick that I heard people saying these days. Uh, so, uh, so, can tell. so this one would be like psi equals to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, ka. Cosine equals to adjacent over hypotenuse and TOA, tangent equals to opposite over adjacent. Hopefully it helps. For, for these, unfortunately, we don't have like a quick trick to remember uh, the last three, but we do have some identities that we're gonna get in the next second to um, memorize these better. Okay, so anyone have any questions so far? All right, so it's time to get to some exercise. Say for the first example, okay, I'm gonna let you guys like think about it for a minute while I'm raising four. Okay, so the problem, it gives us a triangle like this, and it's asking us to find the six trigonometric functions. And I would like you guys to keep this in the in the good format like this. It's always gonna be like sine here, cosecant in here, cosine here, secant in here, tangent in here, cotangent here. Even if your test or your quiz, please keep it like this format, okay? Um, the quick way to remember this one would be like, it should be like in zigzag form. Like this one has a C, this one has also a C, and this one also starts with a C. So you would know, like, there will be three C's and three non-C's. So then you're not gonna, like, miss out any, like, one of the six trigonometric functions in here in your answer. And, uh, let's see. Okay, so, we know from earlier, by the definition, psi equals to, uh, what is it, opposite over hypotenuse. But how do we know which one is opposite, which one is hypotenuse? And as you guys can see, there, there's a missing um, sign here. So can anyone help me find this sign, the length of that sign? How can we do it? Any ideas? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, thank you. So let me pull it down a little bit, it's too tall. It's 
too far out. I can't just swallow it down. So by the Pythagorean theorem, how can I continue, continue from here? I'm sorry? Um, how can I use the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle? Yeah? You need it to find the hypotenuse. Right. And how can I find the hypotenuse? Putting it in the formula, so you get 2 squared plus uh, grad okay. squared. Okay. Okay. Wait, you could say what? 7. 7? Okay. Yeah. Um, do you get the same idea as this one? Yeah. Do you agree with that, too? Yeah. But square root of 7. Thank you. Why do we have to do the square of 7? That's right, because this one is only c squared. So c in here would be square of 7. So this one, hypotenuse in here, would be square root of 7. OK, if my angle theta is this little guy in here, then which one in here would be hypotenuse? I mean, which one in here would be adjacent, and which one would be the opposite sign? Square of 3 is adjacent. Thank you. And the other one would be? Opposite, thank you. Very nice. So how can I put things together and, and define, and write the answer for sign? Um, let's see. Anyone want to volunteer to write out the answer? We need like six volunteers. And it's okay to be wrong. If no one volunteers, I'm gonna like give you guys uh, the marker. And you guys have to help me. Done once. Going twice. So let's see. Can you help me with the first one? Any of them? Thank you. Thank you. Can you help me with any of them? Um, let's see. Can you help me with any of them? Any more? Can you help me with any of them? Thank you. Can you help me with one of them? Thank you. And can you help me with one of them? Thank you. Yes. What was the last? Uh, the last. Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, let me bring it up in a second. Okay. I forgot to, uh, to talk about that. Thank you. Thanks. And you can ask your neighbor too if you want to. If you want to work along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me retrace this one probably to like. So does everyone agree with what we have in here? Do you guys think all of them are right? Let's see. Look, looks like you guys did a really good job in here. But uh, for this class, I'm OK with being like having the square on the bottom. But I would refer this one. I would refer you guys to like multiply by the um, um, radical of it, I would refer to have uh, everything rationalized. So for example, this one, I would multiply the top and bottom by square of 7, just to get ri ri rid of the root on the, on the bottom. So in here, I'm going to get 3 times 7, which is 21, I think. This one's 7. Um, this one, the 2, doesn't have any square root, so I'm OK with that. Coming to this one, the 3 has a square root. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by square root of 3. And again, 7 times 3, we're going to have 21. Bottom, we have 3. This one is safe. So that's about it. OK. So next up, let's spend like four minutes on this problem. And again, I'm going to give, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask for like six volunteers for this problem. Actually, seven volunteers for this problem. I'm going to need someone to help me find uh, 
like the, the extra sign here and label the, the triangle just like this one so that we know which one is hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. And after that, can I have like six people um, finish this one and this one, please? And you guys can work in group or in pairs, it doesn't matter. So thank you everyone for helping me with this one. Um, do we have the same answers in here? 
Any disagreement? Okay. I think these are the right answers. So if you need more explanation, please see me after class. Okay. All right. You can even talk to your neighbor, like friends, too. Okay. So any questions so far? Thank you. And um, this a blank earlier that I forgot to uh, mention. Let me erase this one. And by the way, if, you, if I'm moving too fast, you can take pictures in this class too. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. So, oh, I forgot to talk about these things. So, the six ratios of a right triangle are called trigonometric. Trig. Functions of acute angles. Okay, where ABC uh, and theta should be all positive. Now remember that ABC in here, they, they should be all side lengths, right, according to the picture. A should be the, the measure of this side, B is the measure of this side, and C is the measure of the hypotenuse. So they should all be positive. If you have like a negative measurement, it doesn't make sense in real life. And as for the um, th angle theta, um, we would want to keep it positive by going clockwise, no, counterclockwise. Um, right now, the, the rotation doesn't like make a big of a difference right now. It's not a big deal. But we, we will have to care about the rotation later on in the future. But so but for right now, just make sure you all have like positive numbers, answers in your in your work. If you were to have something negative, you might want to double check your work. Okay. And let's move on to the next topic. Okay, so to the next page, number two, use the fundam fundamental identities. So we learned about one way how to find the six trigonometric fu uh, functions already. There's also the second way that we can use to find uh, the six trigonometric functions. Let me list out the... Okay, so if you can go back to page two for the table. Let me quickly just rewrite it in here to make sure we're on the same page. So we have sine theta equals to b over c, cosine of theta equals to a over c, tangent of theta equals to b over a. This one cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Theta, theta, theta. Okay, so do you think there's any relationship between like any pair of them? Like, is there any purpose behind putting this one and this one together? What do you guys now notice about them? Ish, yeah, they like they they flipping like this. If you flip this one, you're gonna get this one. So in math, to make it like formal, we have the the word reciprocal for it. Um, you can simply understand it about understand it like flipping it. So with that saying, co cosecant should be like one over what? Any guess? What should go underneath of this one? Psi, cosine, tangent, cotangent, or secant? One over psi, thank you. So this one in here, the first spot, would be psi of theta. Right. With the same logic using this um, like ratios in here, what should I put in here? What is what should be the reciprocal of secant? Cosine theta, thank you. So we have cosine theta. Nice. And for the last one, what should be the reciprocal of cotangent? Tangent, nice. So it should be one over tangent. So in the future, if I give you sine, you can find me cosine by flipping it. 
If I give you cosine, you can find secant right away by flipping it. Okay. Um, so the good trick for this one is that one s, no one c would 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 go with like um, one function that doesn't, doesn't start with that the c. So for d two, this one has a c. For d two, this one has a c. And for d two, this one will have a c. So you have like two c's together for saying if you like cannot recall what the reciprocal of cosine, for example, and you say something like cosecant in here, you automatically know that this is wrong because you have two c's in here. Okay. So that's a like a, a quick trick to remember these, or like double check on yourself. For quotients, it means division in here. Technically, it tells you that you grab two function, divide them, you would get another function. So this, can anyone guess what will go on top and, and bottom on this one? Good, thank you. So we're gonna have psi over cosine. Why is it psi over cosine? If you notice, it would take the first one divided by the second one. Sine divided by cosine, meaning B over C, divided by A over C in here. We know that if we divide two fractions in here, we have to keep the first fraction. We multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. We flip this one. The C cancels out. We only have B over A left, and that's how we get tension. Okay, so they did a lot of math for this one. That's how they come up with this convention to have tension um, being psi over cosine. Okay, and with the same logic, using the, the second column in here, can anyone guess how, um, like, what the relationship between cotension and any other like function? There we go. Good job. So we're gonna have cosine of theta over sine theta. And if you take a look at this one, psi over cosine, cosine over psi, the, these two are also the reciprocal of each other, which is why this one, again, is right. Okay, so everything should like link back to each other. Um, the last one is harder a little bit. By Pythagorean theorem, PT earlier, we know the relationship between a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. To so double check on this one, if you sway up this one, if you sway up this one, we're gonna get something like B over C square plus A over C square. And then let me use this one. If we break it down, the parentheses, we're going to have something like B square over C square plus A square over C square. As they have the same denominator, we can combine the tops to get b squared plus a squared over c squared. And from the Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So we will have c squared over c squared, and as they the same thing, it will be just one. Okay, that's how we get this one being one. And this relationship always holds true no matter what right triangle you add. Okay, and with the same logic, using like different pairs. We're going to have tension squared plus one equals to secant squared, and so on with the other one. Okay, so now I want us to try on this problem. Example two, I'm going to give you guys one um, function, and you guys have to help me find the other four functions. Or actually, this one I give you two functions already, and you guys have to help me find the other four missing numbers. But remember, you shouldn't draw the triangles just like how we did in the, in, in the example one. You have to keep playing, play, playing around with it using diabandies. You can use division in here. You can use flipping. But give it a try and let me know if it works, OK? So just to make sure we're on the right track, in here I'm going to put 
using the fundamental identities. Oh, I haven't given a name for this one. So in here, I just want to make sure that we're not going to go back to draw to drawing like a right triangle and label them hypotenuse and um, adjacent opposite. We have to stick with the rules that we had earlier. And I'm going to uh, give you like, OK, so this one blank in the beginning of the page, it should be this word, fundamental identities. I forgot to like uh, talk about that. So like the first line of like this um, page, is that, that by the relationship between psi, cosine, tension, cosecant, secant, and cotension, we also have the fundamental identities. That, that is the blank for this. Did anyone have a chance to figure out what cosecant in here equals to? Yeah? Three. How do you get three? Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. So in here, the reciprocal of, of um, cosecant would be sine. We have three, one over three, so there's re the reciprocal of it would be three over one, which is three. How about secant? Anyone has uh, the answer for secant? Yes? Perfect. Three sweet. Okay, how do you get it? So. Okay, and then you multiply. Perfect. Yeah. And like you said, there's. Yeah. Two times two on the bottom, which is four. Yeah. Uh, my four is weird. Okay, thank you. And then the last two, these two are a little bit tough. Like it's harder a little bit in the sense that you have to like, um, from be, like you have to recall the algebra trick, like keep, flip, multiply. If we were to divide two fractions, we have to keep the first fraction, multiply with the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay. Anyone has the answer for um, tension? Okay, how do you get it? Um, uh, by the, by the right, of which one? Of the one over three or like two or two over three? Uh, I think, uh, nice. So with that saying, we're going to do sine divided by cosine. So we keep one over three, but we will multiply with the reciprocal of cosine, which is three over square root of two. The, two cancel, the three cancels in here. And we're going to get something like 1 over 2 square root of 2. And then we multiply the top and bottom by square root of 2. And we should end up with square root of 2 over 4. Okay. So thank you. You're right. And for the last spot in here, anyone's had any idea? I mean, we can do the long way, but there's a shortcut for cotension, right? Like using the reciprocal identity. Anyone knows what it is? Any ideas for cotension? Which one? The tangent. the tangent, right. If we flip the tangent, we should get something like 4 divided by square root of 2. Um, how should we move on from there? Multiply by square root of 2, thank you. So then we're going to end up with 4 square root of 2 over 2. But then this 4 can cancel with this 2. So the final answer for this one should just be 2 square root of 2. Okay. So let me give you guys like uh, three minutes to try on this one. And again, I'm going to have some volunteers to fill up these missing like uh, space. Okay.
answer it? So here's the answer. If you have like any problems, try to get to the answer. Please talk to me. Um, if you have a different answer, please talk to me also. Okay. Um, so any questions so far on these? I remember one thing. There's like 33 people in here against one me. So if you don't say, if you have any question, I can't. I can't tell. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know if you struggle or anything. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on to the second part. Uh, let me scroll it up a little bit. Okay, let me erase this one. Okay, so. Notice that this time I give you like a fixed angle. It's not theta anymore. It's not random anymore. I want it to be a fixed number, a fixed value in here. So how would we handle this one? We're going to treat it as the same way as we use theta. So if you have the square in here, my first instinct would be looking at the Pythagorean identities. Okay, so how can I deal with this one? What do we know about secant square or tangent square of, a, of an angle? Is there anything we can use? Identities, which, which one, which identity? Right, thank you. Right, right, what do we know about, right, you said something about tension square? Uh, right, so instead of using secant square, we're gonna use tension square of the same angle, which is 28 degrees. Make sure you don't, you don't write theta in here, okay? If I write theta in here, you have to copy the same angle in here, but if I write like 28, um, degrees, you have to copy it. Okay. And plus one in here for the Pythagorean, Pythagorean, Pythag, I'm just going to put Pythag and then identities. Okay. And this one I haven't touched it, so I'm just going to rewrite down here. <coughs> okay. So now we can cancel this tangent square with this tangent square, and the final answer would be one. Okay. So do you guys want to go ahead and try the other one? This one should be short too. And make sure you know what identity to use. It's not always just about the Pythagorean identities. It could be sometimes quotient identities or it could be the reciprocal identities. Okay. And if you guys have the answer, just shout it out, okay? Should be negative. Remember, we only have like positive answers, so it should be negative. But it's really close. Anyone? What is it? 
Wait, what? One. one, yes. Okay. So the answer for this problem is one. And again, if you don't know how to get to it or you need more explanation for it, let me know, okay? Like you can come see me in class office hour anytime you want. Or email me even. Okay. So for the sake of time, yes. Um, Questions? Oh, nothing? Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want to help me with that? Do you want to help me write? Thank you. Thank you. Here, let me just erase this one, just in case you need more space. The way I did it, you just pretty much do a sign of uh, tangent, sign of a cosine. Good job. Yeah, that's the fastest way, yeah. Thank you. Is that clear? Anyone like uh, have any idea about this one? Like disagree, agree, anything? Okay. So with that saying, let's move on to the next topic because we're running out of time to. So the next one, um, we have to find the values of the remaining trig functions, given a value of one of them. So it's just like before, I'm going to give you one of the six value. It could be sine, it sometimes could be cosine, tangent, any one of them. And you guys have to help me find the other five trig values. So we talk about two methods. The first method is to draw out a triangle and you define which one is the hypotenuse opposite adjacent to the angle. And from there, um, you use a definition of so SOHCAHTOA. And the second method, let me raise this one first. And the second method is to use the identities, the fundamental identities that we just talked um, a minute ago. That's why we have two solutions. Solution one, we would use the definition. So the, let me pull it down. So this blank in here, we will put definition. What does it mean by definition? It's just by using SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA. So as long, long as you remember the meaning of like S, O, and H, and T, you're good to go. Um, and again, within the three sides in here, this one is missing. So make sure you identify it now. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate it out. And after that, just put them up like these, just like what we did in the example one. And then we have the answer. OK, so let me give you guys like two minutes to finish this one. And again, I'm going to ask for some volunteers.
You had to show the four, yes, yes. to get some credit, yeah. Yes. Okay, so just like a quick, um, how should I say, a uh, reminder that these should be the answers for this problem, not the other problem, okay? So uh, make sure you guys write it in here, not in there, okay? Yeah. This one we don't know the answer to it yet, and it's going to be like one of the homework assignment, and it's going to be on the, the quiz too, okay? So, so far, remember, we have two problems on a quiz, right? I promise you guys there's two problems on a quiz. The quiz will be around like 10 or 15 minutes, depends on how much you need it. But the 15 minutes is like the, the limit part. Like we cannot go um, uh, above 15 minutes. So we remember to um, review the area of the sector, okay? Remember um, to know how to convert between degrees and radians, and also this part, okay? And in, in the quiz, I'm only gonna ask you to do one of the solutions, not two solutions, okay? So it's up to your taste. You can, do, you can do it by finding a definition of it, or you, we can do it by doing the second way, um, using the identities. Let me take these out. Okay. 
Gut. Okay, so that's one solution by using the definition. The second way that we can do this problem is by using the Pythagorean theorem. So just like part two that we did earlier in page three, I think. Yeah, just like page three. So again, you have a lot of options of identities. You can use uh, the quotient identities, precipical identities, or the Pythagorean identities. As long as you figure out those six value, you save. So uh, let's see. Is that it? Yeah, you cool, you cool. Okay, so again, the answer should be the same. Psi, it should be, psi should be square root of three over four. And then cosecant, it should be four root three over three and so on for the rest of them. But just remember one thing, how you find cosi is that you're gonna have to use the Pythagorean identities. All's giving just psi, you, you only can do cosecant and that's it. Like if you don't know how to use the Pythagorean identities, you cannot figure out the other four. That doesn't make any sense so far? Yeah, okay. And again, if you want, you can double check yourself using the identities, the Pythagorean identities in here. And if you have like any six of them having the different answer than the previous solution, um, that means something is wrong. So you can come talk to me or double check your work. Okay. Let's move on to the last part of the day. Okay, number four, you use a com complementary angle theorem. Okay, so two acute angles are called complementary. If their sum is a right angle. Too far up. Yeah, I can run this. Okay, so I think for this one, it should be their sum is a right angle. And what does it mean by that? It means like, wait, what? Thank you. So for example, if I give you something like 30 degrees, what should it be? What, what should be the complementary angle of it? 60, thank you. If I give you, if I give you something like 0 0.1 degrees, what should be the complementary angle of it? It will be a decimal, definitely. If anyone has a calculator that can help me calculate uh, the complementary of this angle of degree. It's just the same logic as how you find 60. To find this one, we're going to do 90 minus 30, which is 60, right? So, four to five. Thank you. So, it should be 89.9 degrees. Okay. Um, what else? Because the sum of the angles of any triangle is 180. Let me draw a quick one in here. Say this one is like 90 degrees. We know that this one and this one and this one add up to 180. And this one is already 90s. So the outer two angles, they have to add up to 90s. Okay. And then with that saying, in any right triangle, the other acute angles, they automatically become the complementary angles of each other. Okay. Uh, so that leads us to this theorem, complementary angle theorem, co-function. Co-function. Co uh, complementary angles are equal to each other. What does it mean by that is, Let's go up a little bit. We're gonna have this chart. So speaking of converting from like gradients to degrees, can anyone tell me what this angle is in degrees? 
30 degrees, thank you. And the, uh, and the other angle, what is this one? 60, thank you. So we talked about how 30 degrees and 60 degree make uh, complementary angles. These would be the co-function. Sine here and cosine in here would be the co-function. It tells you that sine of like something in here equals to cosine of whatever remainder from like 90 degrees in here. With the same logic, tangent and cotangent are co-function. Secant and cosecant, they are co-functions. So there's two ideas that we have to remember in here. Co-function are equal to each other if the angles inside are complementary. Okay, you cannot do something like psi of say 30 degrees equals to cosine of say 45 degrees. Just because you see sine cosine here, doesn't, it doesn't mean that this one always equal. You have to make sure that this angle and this angle add up to 90. If they add up to something else not 90, it's not gonna work. Okay, so for this one, I just want you guys to remember one thing about co-function. Psi goes along with cosine, tan go, goes along with cotangent, secant goes with cosecant, okay? And as for a quick assignment, I mean example to demonstrate the gal. Okay, using the complementary angles theorem fi to find the exact value of each expression, do not use a calculator. So, do you guys want to give it a try for this one? A quick hint would be like this. As you can see, there's like three angles in here, 40 degrees, 40 degrees, and 50 degrees. So my instinct would be, why can't we just convert this one back to like 40s? If there's any way that we can convert like psi 50 to something that has 40 degrees in there, that would be great. But what can go in here? What should go in there? Tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent? What should go in there? Cosine, yeah. Now that I know that this one is cosine, what do I know about cosine divided by sine? What is it? I'm sorry? Ish, but like one of the definitions we know from the quotient identities, if you can look back at it, what does it, what do we have if we take cosine divided by sine? Cotangent, nice. So this one, I'm just gonna bring it down because I haven't touched it. So this one, cosine, cotangent of four degrees, that one's weird. Okay, minus, this one turns out to be another cotangent of four degrees. They cancel out and then the answer turns out to be zero. So if you guys want, let's give it a try for this problem. Let's see if we can finish it in five minutes. Let me raise that one too. Does anyone have the answer for the second part yet? You guys need more time? Ready? Hold up, let's see if anyone has any idea to finish this one. Anyone wants to give it a try or just like give me some ideas how to start on that? It is. Good job. Can you help me with that? Guess? Yeah. Okay, any like thoughts for that guess? Well, I just kind of went through the cotangent and the tangent 60, right? So you and change this one to? Tangent 65. Okay, that's right. Tangent 65. 35 came up. Uh, I mean, cosine mm. 65. Wait, which one? Slow down. Which one? Uh, secant. Secant? Uh, 35. For this one? Yeah. 
you want to change it to Seekin 35? Yeah. Okay. And for but, sign? Right. I changed it to Kilo sign 65. 65. Okay. This is really good, but there's one thing for this one is that, first of all, this one should be 25. Oh, sorry, 25. Right. But then, again, the angles would be a mix, right? Like, you don't want to have more than one angle. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to change this one. You want to keep this one, rather. That makes sense? This one, this one is 65 already, and this one is also so 65. You would oh, want to keep, keep this. Okay. Yeah, just keep this one. So then you can have just, a, just one angle, not two. Okay. Or in the beginning, actually, this one is 25, and this one is 25 already. Or you can change that. Exactly. You can ch just change this one to, like, secant of 25 degrees. And everything will be just 25. And then what can I go after this? What should I do? And identities, definition that I can use. Oh, and by the way, like one uh, kind of like quick like advice in here. In the future, like anywhere in trick, like if you get stuck, I would recommend turning everything into sine, cosine. That's just like rule, rule of thumb. Like anything back to cosine, sine. So with that saying, how can we redraw tension as something with sine, cosine? What is tension? There we go, right. So we're going to have tension equals to sine 65 over cosine of 65. And again, this one is not sine or cosine, so how can we turn this one back to, to either sine or cosine? One over sine. One over sine. Thank you. And lastly, the last spot in here, how should we handle it? Anyone remember what cosecant is, um, cotension is in terms of sine cosine? Cosine, cosine yeah. Okay. When it comes to here, what can we cancel and what should we have? Okay. The sides are canceled. Yeah, that's why it's like mess up for a moment. Thank you. Um, this one had a C cosecant. Right? Oh no, cosine, you're right, you're right. Should be just cosine. And this one should be just over one because cosine is cosine over one. And then someone told me that I can go ahead and cancel the signs and then cosine the cancel and that's how we get one. Okay, like any questions so far on this one? And if you want, you can restart this one by converting only this one to 25 degrees, okay? There's nothing wrong with that either. Okay. Okay. Just in time. So thank you all for helping me with like the answers today. <coughs> and a signing sheet is up here. If you uh, didn't sign, uh, if you if you didn't sign yet, make sure you sign in before you leave. <coughs> 